Hi there, Ian Dixon here. How are you today? So, um, at the date of recording this video, if you're watching it uh, past March 2020, uh, we were kind of at the front end of our pan global pandemic uh, situation with a uh, COVID-19 uh, virus challenge that we have and uh, there are lots of small businesses already affected and so I thought it would be a good idea to put a, a list, in fact I've blown the dust off some of the things off of a list on how to cope best through difficult and challenging economic times. So uh, some of the things on here, um, I can remember writing down back in 2007, 2008, when we had the global recession. And uh, many of the things on here are about preparing for difficult times as opposed to how to react to different things. And I've re I, in fact, I wrote down about 15, but I've, you know, cause I wanna keep these videos short. I've got it down to about 10. So if you are in business and you are, uh, um, either expecting to be struggling uh, with this uh, COVID-19 uh, challenge, um, if you're already struggling, or even if that's all finished and you're watching this video in five years time and there's some other um, economic uh, strain on your business, then I feel confident these will be just as valid. So stick around if that, because that's basically where we're going over the next six to seven minutes. I'm gonna list 10 things that you can do when uh, the economic markets or the, the global markets are down, um, uh, how best to get through that as a small business owner. Um, if you are somebody that hasn't done so already, please do click on our subscribe button. Uh, we welcome your comments. Um, obviously a like is always helpful too, and of course to share. It really, really does help this fast growing channel. So thank you for that. Right, let's just get into some of these then uh, to, to share some, because I'm guessing you kind of know what they are. There are some no-brainers on here, of course, but it's worth reiterating and worth mentioning anyway, uh, because I never want to assume that you'd given it consideration. So, so the first thing on here, of course, is cash flow. Cash flow is the lifeblood of any business, whether we're in any kind of economic strain or not. Um, if you don't have a good handle on your day-to-day -day cash, um, it can cripple even successful businesses. So, uh, so the first thing, of course, is making sure that you have enough uh, cash flowing in and out of your business that enables you to pay bills and, um, of course, uh, cash is coming in freely to help you be able to do some of those things. So because it gives you choices ultimately at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, working out uh, what cash is coming in and what needs to be paid in what order and creating lists of, of things that have priorities so that you are maintaining some kind of cash flow is critical. The second one I had a conversation with a client about this morning because it's been proven over and over again is that um, so often when a business starts to struggle one of the things, uh, financially struggle, one of the things that they turn off is their marketing because it's seen as an expense because whatever they've been doing clearly hasn't been working and as a consequence they, um, they start to sort of taper down how much money they're spending on their marketing. And uh, it's been proven over and over again that you must, must, must keep marketing. And to the extent that when we are in difficult times, it's the businesses that are able to and are capable of or choose to, because there's lots of things that you can do uh, to keep marketing, will win through. So, so it's really, really important that if there are things that are being stopped that you would ordinarily do to go to market, for example, uh, networking groups, so if you are somebody that networks and that uh, resource, that opportunity has been taken away, find alternative ways in order to uh, undertake that marketing strategy or find an alternative marketing strategy to offset what you're losing because you can't network. So um, that's just one example, but um, the bottom line is, to the, the, the tip is to make sure 
that you do not stop marketing. So, because if you are, you know, if, the, if there's this, well, I've only got this much money and I can't afford to, to, to do X, Y, or Z, the conversation you and I would be having is, well, let's find other things. So there is always something that you can do, whether it be low or no cost. And nowadays we have these amazing platforms where the only true cost is our time. So there, there is no financial cost at all. So, so the tip is keep marketing. The third one's quite interesting. I use this as a marketing uh, uh, strategy generally, uh, especially if uh, I hear or my client hears that um, there are opportunities from other companies closing. And it's basically being able to, and being prepared and being ready to scoop up orphaned clients or customers or orphaned prospects from companies that have either closed or decided to close their doors um, or you know um, gone into administration or whatever it might be that it then creates a raft of orphans customers and clients that you could scoop up so uh, in recent times um, uh, one of my clients who runs an opticians an opticians practice um, she was made aware that one of her neighboring opticians was looking to close and whilst it wasn't official, the rumor mongers were going around. And so it was about putting marketing messages out that sort of says, but we've been here for 10 years and we're you know, just around the corner, we're your local optician and it's planting seeds. So, so my tip would be, I've written down here to scoop up orphans, but my tip would be to start marketing in a way that says we're not going anywhere. So if somebody lets you down or something's not working with your existing supplier or um, uh, you know, uh, uh, business, then we'll be here to support and, and uh, help you out. So that's a great message to put out, whether that's in a 60 second pitch, in a leaflet through a letterbox, in a Facebook post, in uh, as, a, as a banner on your website, just uh, to find ways to start to prepare to scoop up orphaned uh, clients. The next one is, um, is something very specific uh, to do when uh, times are starting to get difficult, is to review all of your supply chains. If you are a product supplier, um, don't ever assume that everything is okay, is to proactively go and make sure that your supply chain right the way through is working okay. So you may know that the warehouse is full of products, but is the courier company that's delivering that product still okay? So uh, are the staff that work in the warehouse still okay? Are they, have they laid any of their staff off? So, so make sure that your supply chain right the way through your process, uh, if it's, especially if you're a product supplier, is sound. And even if it is sound, this is a great time to review that uh, supply chain and to explore other opportunities or other supply chains. This one specifically, I can think of a few examples where we've had kickback from uh, supply chains to, that, that hasn't been great from a relationship like mind your own business kind of thing. And what it's done is it's encouraged the business owner to go and seek out other supply chains and they've ended up getting better deals, quicker deliveries, and it you know, was nothing but, but, but beneficial. So number four is supply chain review. Number five is to, um, again, I, I'm a very abundant person, so I'm not somebody that is adverse to this at any time of the year, but I know lots of us as business owners, we're very competitive, or we're working in a very competitive market. Uh, but the tip is to seek out collaborative opportunities. So, so for example, if you've got two businesses uh, that are in office space, and what, you know, one of my tips on here is to review your outgoings, and you're thinking, you know, maybe we should be downsizing the office, or maybe we should even let the office go. If there's two of you sat having breakfast at a networking event, and you're both thinking the same thing, why don't you get together? So, so you're not competing for customers, what you're doing is sharing resource. So there's lots of ways that you can create a collaborative kind of arrangement. So, 
Uh, strategic alliances and, and working together with other businesses is good all the time, but especially good um, when we're forced, you know, when we're under the cosh, is to look at ways in which we can get some kind of collaborative opportunity going. So, highly recommended. Number six is if you are fortunate enough to be a business owner that is running teams, is to sit them down and do several things. The first thing, of course, is to reassure them and to, and to be overly communicative, you know, to, to communicate um, uh, a lot more open and a lot more freely than you would ordinarily do. Again, you know, um, uh, communication is a really big one for me anyway, but uh, to go over and above uh, during uh, difficult times to reassure them and let them know that, um, you know, as a leader, you're, uh, you're, you're on it, you know, and you, you've got things going on. But as a part of that communication, is to ask them for their contributions towards um, how to solve some of the challenges. Because um, as bosses, we're expected to have all the answers and we don't. And actually, on the contrary, often some of our coalface workers and the people that are customer facing on a daily basis have uh, both experienced the challenge and have worked out fabulous solutions. So asking teams to contribute towards uh, resolution and uh, solving problems at any time is a good thing to do, of course it is, but especially good uh, when we're in a, a difficult um, uh, commercial environment like we are at the, at the moment. The next one is the kind of no-brainer which you would have expected to see at the top of the list. These aren't in any particular order. Um, renegotiate credit terms with your banks, your suppliers, your loan companies and your landlords. So um, at the very least, what, uh, what you want to know is where do I stand and what are your policies regarding. So um, because having the information helps you at the very least uh, prepare. So. Um, but uh, I know for a fact that banks and loan companies are, set, uh, are putting together um, uh, plans to be able to support and of course uh, which is all supported with the government um, but individuals like suppliers, um, private loan companies um, and landlords are people that are worth renegotiating your credit terms with too. Um, because uh, anything that helps towards retaining our cash flow, of course, is going to help us keep going. So, so number seven is renegotiating terms, uh, or at the very least, understanding policy and process uh, from your bank suppliers, loan companies, and uh, landlords. Number eight, um, again, as you would expect, uh, I is kind of the first thing to be on the list is review, sit and review all of your outgoings. You know, get yourself a full and comprehensive list. If you don't have it, you should have it. So uh, I was talking to somebody this morning about how much good comes out of adversity. Like it is amazing how much good comes out of adversity. So we are 13 minutes in and I probably should have said that at the start of the video today because not everybody stays as long as you have. So, uh, but there is always good things to come out of diversity. And uh, if you don't have a comprehensive list of your outgoings, you're missing out, you absolutely should have. Now let's assume that you have. Um, the, the core message here, of course, is to review those outgoings but be mindful and careful of two things to cut off of that um, outgoing list. One is your staff resource. Um, be very careful of who or how you reduce your workforce because if you reduce your workforce and it impacts on your service levels, ultimately you are in a tailspin and you'll end up losing business because the customer will still expect good standards and levels of service from you, and you should expect it too, of course. So I know somebody locally uh, that is in hospitality, and uh, that um, venue got bought by another company, and they did what a lot of big companies do, they uh, drastically reduced the overhead, the staffing overhead, and that has had big uh, implications on service delivery. So. Um, and that was for other reasons, of course, but you know, the, the, 
the caveat when you're reviewing your outgoings is be mindful if you are looking to reduce overhead from a staffing perspective. Um, and then the other one was your marketing spend, uh, which we covered earlier. It's critical. It's like it's been proven so many times. Um, I, I would argue that when times are tough, rather than turning your marketing down, you turn your wick up. You turn your marketing wick up. 15 minutes, so we're going to get to the end of this. Number nine is don't be tempted to diversify unless you are really clear about what it is you are diversifying into. So diversification is a really interesting one. And I, I, I kind of toyed whether or not to even put it in here. So I think the reason for me why I left it in is because it is something I, that I have on occasion encouraged people to do because if they are in a particular niche or market or field that is profoundly affected by uh, current situation then of course it's an important conversation to have are there other areas that we can go into uh, but uh, the, 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 the warning message, if you like, and the, the, the key message here is only diversify if you are in that category and look to diversify in such a way that it does not have implications for your primary or core product or service when things uh, resume. Because um, it, so often I see people diversify or change direction out of choice or through excitement of seeing something shiny that they want to go and get involved in whether it's because it's going to generate more money or um, they're bored what they're doing or that they've taken advice that they need to you know spread themselves out a little bit and so often I see businesses literally fold not because of what they were chasing and going to but because they didn't keep an eye on what they were coming from so it's never about where you're going because that's where all your excitement is. It's about what you're leaving behind. And I call it your heart and lungs. You know, you're making sure that if you choose to diversify, that you keep an eye on your heart and lungs and that they are still working for you. So number 10, the last one. Uh, I had others, but like we're 17 minutes in now. So um, if you're inbound activity slows. So for example, if lead generation is slowing down, if customer maintenance and customer supply is slowing down, as a business owner, you should be busier. So how this basically works is, uh, the, the, the people that work with me will know that as soon as somebody says it's quiet, then I'm like, well then we can get busy. So is that we always, always, say that we don't have enough time to do the things that we need to be doing. And this is one of those positive spin outs, is that when people are uh, incredibly uh, busy dealing with inbound and you know busyness, that they can't get at these things, is that when it goes quiet, then that's the perfect time to review systems, to look at, um, at your costs, to renegotiate terms, to uh, you know, re-look at your marketing gear some marketing towards orphaned uh, customers, to work out new ways to generate cash flow so that you are working uh, day to day rather than longer term. So um, there are so many things that I know that you're thinking, there are, you've probably got a big long list of things that you never normally are able to get at. So don't be sat there waiting for the phone to ring if you're in an industry that's starting to feel the pinch because of the whole COVID, the, uh, COVID-19 uh, challenge, it sounds like a, a yacht race, but you know what I mean, um, because of this uh, uh, global shutdown, is that internally you can get yourself busy. There is a mountain of things that you can be doing. So, so there you go. Um, get yourself into response mode. So before it gets to a position where you're having to react to what's happening, and reaction is just so much more challenging than being uh, getting into a response. Um, the, the very word responsible is comes from responsible. So responsible. So being able to respond is infinitely better than getting into reactive mode. So. Um, Watch your cash flow, make sure that there's plenty. Um, keep your marketing going. Look at ways to scoop up the orphans, um, your, to review your supply chains. 
with meticulously, you know, go into, into detail with them, um, look at collaborative opportunities in all sorts of ways, not just about uh, working together. Um, ask teams to contribute and make sure your lines of communication are a, a doubly strong at the moment. Renegotiate terms with your bank suppliers, loans and landlords. Review all of your outgoings, but be mindful of cutting resource and um, uh, marketing spend. Don't be tempted to diversify unless you're really clear about what it is that you're going to diversify into. And if it slows inbound, then you should be busier internally because there's no excuse anymore that you haven't got time. 20 minutes, I'm sorry. But important message, uh, with uh, all the uh, challenges that we currently have in March 2020 when this video goes out, uh, I just thought it was important to put something together that if you are somebody that's struggling or that you can see it coming that you're going to be struggling, get yourself into response mode and look at doing some of these things as soon as you can because I'm sure it's going to help you in the long term. Hope you found that useful. Please do support the, the channel here. Business Talk has over 300 videos coming in 2020. Uh, lots of topical things coming to support you. Um, please do give us a like and a share. And we look forward to catching up with you on the next video. Bye for now.